Here's a promise that I want to make you guys for today. I want to show you the roadmap that takes you from not knowing how to draw. That's the A point, being able to draw characters and worlds to tell stories with it. Now, I want to be clear what we're going to do today, right? The roadmap that I want to share with you today works for people who have never picked up a pencil in their entire life to folks who've been drawing for a while, but still not improving their art. That is the goal. That is the idea right here. So it doesn't matter if you're 13 or 35, younger, old, mom or dad, student or otherwise. If you have a hand that can hold a pencil like this, this is a pen, by the way, or you've got some brains between your two years and you can count from one to 10, this will work for you. <laughs> that is the idea right here. Because here's the thing. I know this works because this is what I've personally used to transform my art and make massive progress over the years. Massive. Lots, lots of progress. One of my mentors told me, Kesh, you used to draw like a three-year-old high on ice cream. That's exactly what he told me. It was, it was a weirdly weird way to tell me. But anyways, I went from that to being able to draw the way I do right now. And also at the same time, I've used this framework to transform the art of other people through drawing camp. So, and set them on like sort of a very good, efficient drawing path to tell stories with their art, do a lot of other things. And how are we able to do this? This is the core part of the workshop, 10 core skills. That is the goal. I'm gonna give you guys 10 core skills that will help you to sort of go from zero to hero. And also along with the 10 core skills, I wanna give you a tangible action step to start putting each of these skills into action, step by step, right today. That is a goal right here. Also, along with that, I'm going to give you guys a 100-day plan to improve your art in the next four months. Now, here's the thing. I know this works because this is not some theory. This is from my personal experience. Um, I've tested this so many times, so many times over the past three to four years across very many people, very many students deliberately. Plus I have another three years of testing before that. So like six years of data right here. Now, if you want to save six years of your time, well, that's what we're gonna do today. This is after like thousands of hours spent teaching, transforming people's arts and knowing what actually works. So this is not some opinion of a guy from the internet who sort of learned to draw and say, hey guys, this is what works for me. And this is what might work for you too. No, 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 no. This works for me and this works for other people. And there are some fundamental principles and frameworks right here that will actually work for many folks. And this is one of my favorite things that I came across recently, a quote from L.H. Hardwick, which said, a man with an experience is never at the mercy of a man with an opinion. The idea is there are lots of opinions out there on the internet on how to draw, but a lot of it, in my opinion, <laughs> quite the irony right here, is just theory. They've just done it for themselves. They've not done it for other people. That is the thing. That is a game. And here, they've done it for other people. And the data, the things that we're going to share today is from experience. So with that said, let's begin. The artist roadmap going from beginner to pro part one. Now, there's going to be another part two. It's going to be next month. Out of the 10 core skills, I just had the time to cover first five. But those first five are like highly important. Uh, but the other next five, we're going to cover in another workshop. But we have quite a lot of things just for this five. So with that said, folks, are we good? Yeah. Shall we continue with the thing? Yes. If yes, just say, Yay, Y A Y. Just say that and we'll continue. We'll start. We'll start. We'll start. We'll start. Yes. 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 Yay. Yay. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Awesome. Let's go with this. Let's let's start with this thing. All right. Now, before we start officially, I'd like to address the biggest elephant in the room, which is this. I want to tell you what this workshop is not about. Right? Two things. One. We are not going to learn how to draw right here. We're not going to sit and draw, draw some drawing lessons. Hey, guys, this is how you draw a circle. Hey, guys, this is how you sort of draw the human body in this, this particular way. We are going to cover some very specific exercises and things like that, actionable, tangible plans. But it's not a how to draw thing. What we are going to do is learn the most important part of drawing or learning to draw, which is structure, a map map of going from not knowing how to draw, not, not being able to take the ideas from your head onto the paper, not being able to sort of create the things that you want, to being able to do all of that 
from your own imagination, from your own style, in uh, to draw and design characters, to tell your own stories through comics, illustrations, animation, whatever medium that you like. That is the thing. And next one is this, which is a lot of people conduct workshops, and at the end of the day, they'll plug that, hey, guys, buy my course. Am I going to sell something today? Well, yes, I do have something to sell you, but it's not what you think. I have my own 100-day art program drawing cam, which is open, by the way. We can go that, check that out right now, which literally puts this roadmap into effect in the next hour. Like literally, it's the entire roadmap into a 100-day plan the next hour. You can do that. You can buy it. You know, uh, it'll make me happy. It'll give me a lot of money to buy more Ferraris because, you know, I'm so sick and tired of driving to my studio and office in a Lamborghini. Like, I'm just so, so tired, man. I just have seven Lamborghinis, one color for each day, and I am bored. I think I need, I need a new Ferrari. So, yeah, give me some money. But the thing is this. That's not my intention. That's partly my intention. I need my Ferrari. But I want to give you something more. Like, honestly, right? I want to give you something more. Something better. Something that has changed my life from meaninglessness to purposefulness because I was just a wimp before. And going through this journey really changed a lot of things. And I really genuinely hope that it could do the same for you. I'm about to cry right now because it's so emotional. <laughs> and here's how we're going to do it, right? Here's what worked for me. Go from that stage of meaningless to purpose. purpose lack of purpose. You know, it just sucks, right? You wake up in the morning, you don't know what you want to do with your life. That's the thing. This comes in form of a challenge. 100 days that can help you transform your art and possibly your life. That's the thing. That's the deal here, folks. And also, I'm going to give you guys a, a guidebook to download. So if you want all the slides from this particular workshop as a little guidebook, links down below in the description will be available after this workshop. Now, another thing I want to sort of also announce right here is this workshop is a series of workshops that I'd be doing right here on this platform called the Ultimate Drawing Workshops which takes on different topics of drawing, art, creativity, and gives you a solid structure to follow with tangible action plans for each of the thing. And all of it's going to be free on here, on YouTube. And why am I doing this? Well, I'm, I'm, I, just, I just love to please people. And uh, yeah, but, you know, deep insecurities that I've sort of had since I was a child just wants me to sort of please more people by giving a lot more than you know I get back. So yeah. Also, maybe gain some goodwill in the process. You know, do some good before, you know. Also, Ferraris. I love Ferraris. So, yeah. Give me the money, bros. <laughs> anyway, let's start. We're officially starting right now. So, how do you learn drawing? Well, when I'm starting to learn something, I always like to start with three things, which is what, why, and how. Right? So we already established the what, which is like the goal that we have. Like, what, what, what is this thing that we're trying to do? We just to do this, to learn drawing, to draw stylized cartoons and characters. Now, why do you want to do this? That's the next thing, which is this. You got to get clear on these things. Most of you don't just draw for the sake of drawing, right? You want to tell stories, right? You want to do that either through like comics, illustrations, or animations. It doesn't matter. You have something in your heart and in your brain, and you want to share it, especially through the medium of cartoons and character design. So the thing is this. In order to do that, there is this one thing. You just need to learn one skill, which is this, to create one image, one ache. How do you say Uno. Right? Yeah. One image with a story. That is the thing that you need to learn. Why? Because if you do that, you'll be able to do and all the other things, meaning you can tell stories through your comics. You can tell stories through children's books, illustrations, animations, whatever. It all starts with one image. Because what? What is the animation? A series of images put together. What is children's book? A collection of illustrations put together. What is a drawing? It's just one drawing. But yeah, in that case, it's just one image. Because here's the thing. An image comprises of different things like line works, shapes, forms, colors, designs. By the way, I got the typo wrong here. It says Euler's. That's, that's another skill, my friends. Euler's. That's a new thing that you haven't learned. So environment design, prop design, line work, style, composition, storytelling. These are all the things that makes up a image, right? 
And that's where our 10 core skills comes from. You learn these 10 core skills and you will learn how to get that, create that one image. Once you learn how to create one image, you'll be able to do other things. I learned how to create one image with one character, with one story. And then I was like, hey, let me put that together. Oh, it's a series of illustrations. Hey, let me put that together. Oh, it's a comic book. Hey, do that more. Oh, it's an animated short film. Oh, I just went from not being able to draw ever, like five, seven years ago. And then I made an animated short film last year. Crazy, right? So this is the thing. So here's a visual map of our journey. Here's the thing. You are at the start right now, at beginner level, right? You are at the foundations. You are starting out on your journey. And you want to get here, which is the end part, the creation. And to do that, we're going to go through three levels, like a video game. Each phase, you need a certain challenge. You'll be facing a certain challenges. And then you'll be gaining what I like to call gold coins, right? The gold coins, there are 10 gold coins because there are 10 core skills. And there are coins in each level. And each gold coin that you gain is your experience. Like you gain experience in a video game. You do some challenge, you gain gold coins. Have you played Mario? By the way, one of my favorite games. That's the and the gold coin is your experience, and the experience is your skill. That's the thing that you can take away when you die. Except Ferraris, you can also take that too. Other things in life, probably not. Skills that you build in life, characters that you cultivate, and Ferraris. Those are the only three things that you can take with you when you die and lay on your deathbed. That's quite deep. So let's start with that. Let's start with foundations. This is what we're going to cover in today's workshop, which is this. We're going to cover the entire layer of foundations. And mean, my friends, it's got quite a few. Let's start. If you want to build a tall building, you got to dig deeper. Why? Because big trees always have deep roots. Now, I want to tell you guys a story. Here's the biggest mistake that I made as a beginner artist, and it was absolutely stupido. It was extremely stupido, and that is this, which is I was trying to focus on finding my style and the kind of drawing that I wanted to do, but I didn't even know the basics of drawing. Man, I just want to smack that kid if I see that kid again. It was just annoying. And here's the, here's the worst part than that, right? The thing is this. Just because I took some basic drawing lessons or learned some basic drawing or I've been drawing since I was a kid, I thought I knew the basics of drawing. I called myself an intermediate artist. I was like, man, I know the basics. I know lines, shapes, perspective, shading, all that stuff. I know it. I know it all. Because how? I, I, I know it. Hey, two-point perspective. I know it. I know how it works. But here's the thing. It didn't show up in any of my drawings, and I ended up wasting two years of my time doing the biggest mistake beginner artists do, which is this, trying to find your style. It's one of the dumbest things. It's so dumb. To give you an example, it's like taking a three-year-old baby who just learned to walk last Friday, right, to a marathon. It's like, sure, good luck. Maybe if there's a baby-thon, that might work, so yeah. And after some intense periods of frustration, disappointment, anger, self-hatred, and uh, you know, lots of other not so great feelings, I found what they call the basics. And I found it in a stage where I was absolutely at my lowest. And the basics had some gold. I didn't know it had gold, but it had gold. And it was the gold that I needed. And it was probably the gold that most of you all need as well. If you're starting now to draw, if you think you're too much of a hot crap, <laughs> stop yourself, humble yourself. It doesn't matter. Basics. It's not called basics. It's called foundations. The taller you want to go, the deeper you want to dig. Big trees have what? Deep roots. So there are four things in this thing. So let me tell you another story. So this is Carl, right? A student at drawing camp who I had the chance to work with as part of a mentorship. And at the start, he also thought he knew the basics. Now, it's a very honest mistake a lot of beginner artists make. It's fine. But after working together, right, and going from, uh, you know, like, like lots of practice, he went from drawing stuff like this to being able to draw stuff like this. And in the end, after the end of our mentorship, he told me, man, I need to focus even more on my fundamentals. That's what people take away. After eight months of working on the fundamentals of drawing and cartooning, he said, 
I need to work more on my fundamentals because why he's a wise guy. Why? This is the thing. He knows advanced artists do the basics really well. And that's the lesson I recently learned as well, right? A couple of years ago, two or three years ago. Advanced artists do the basics really well. It's not about how well you do something. It's also about the less of the wrong stuff that you do. Is your lines good? Is your shapes good? Is your forms good? It's got so many things. So it's not whether you know it or not. Knowing does not equal learning, right? That's one of the mistakes that I made. I knew how to draw forms. I knew how to draw good lines. I knew how to draw shapes, but it didn't show up in my drawing. And that knowing is useless if it doesn't show up in real life. Like, what's the point of having stuff in your head? You can use Google for that, right? But it needs to show up on hand, on paper. And when it hasn't showed up on hand, on paper, that means you haven't learned. Just like I know, I know how to drive a Formula One race car. You know, those things that are extremely low and just glides like, you know, airplanes and cost $3 million to build. Those things. I know it's got a steer, it's got an accelerator and a brake, and you press it, it goes. But guess what? When this guy sits on that car, I will crash within like 15 seconds. Unless the road is straight, in that case, I will crash it within like 30 seconds, right? Because knowing does not mean reality. Also, another thing, right? A lot of young kids, right? They used to think in their head, oh, if a fight happens, I'm going to do this. I'm going to punch. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to be a fight master because I fight really well in my head, right? A lot of young boys can relate to this, which is funny. I used to do that too. But then you get into a real fight, then you get punched in the face. <laughs> Mike Tyson said that. Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. So just because you know something doesn't mean that you've learned it or doesn't mean that it's an internalized piece of lesson that you hold. That's the thing. So once you know that, here's the thing. There are four skills, four gold coins that you can gain in the fundamental level. And let's get into those things. So here are the four gold coin skills. Here are the four core skills that are part of the foundations and the actionable steps that I'm going to share with you that you can take away with you today. So first one, lines and shapes. Oh, Kesh, I already know this, buddy. Oh, no, you don't. So here's the thing. What is the skill? Well, this is it. Being able to see and draw good lines and shapes in your work, right? That's the thing. If you do that, all your drawings will stop looking like this on the left to looking like this. On the right, the only difference between these two things are just good quality lines, good quality shapes put together. Have you seen those artists who really like feather stuff, just like, right? That's, yeah, that just sucks, right? But to have good quality lines and shapes is being able to control the most important tool that you'll ever have, which is your hand. And it's basic. And I've seen people jump to things like character design and environments and prop design and human anatomy when they cannot draw a proper line. Now, I don't want you to be a robot that draws a line that's so good, but being able to draw and hit the same marks to some level of accuracy is something one can learn. Now, why is this important, right? Here's a sentence from the English language, right? I just want to give you guys an example. It says, I can do that. Right now, what if I just simply remove the alphabet A from it? It'll go from that to I couldn't do. Oh, wait, someone forgot to remove the other A here. That, right? So, if we remove even more, like let's say we remove T from this, it'll go from I can do that to like I can do. That. See, it's not it stops making sense, right? Because Alphabets are the fundamental units of the English language. Just like that, lines and shapes are the fundamental units of a drawing because a drawing is comprised of different lines and shapes put together. You see this drawing on the left? Well, see all the little strokes and marks? Some of the strokes and marks. See, I haven't marked everything. There are some strokes that are out there, some strokes that are not out there, right? It's the fundamental unit of the drawing. You need to learn that thing. So. How do you do that, Cash? You you telling me now you gave me the info, bro. How are you going to do? How are you going to do? I'll tell you, my friend. <laughs> Anyways, here's the thing. Here's how you do this. 
Here's a list of actionable exercises that you can start doing today. Well, one, simple line exercises like straights, curves, S lines, curve lines, thick lines, thin lines, light lines, and uh, what do you say, dark lines. These are all different kinds of lines. The thing is, here's the thing, just, just listen to me, right? You need to be able to put a line. Well, it doesn't have to be in one single try, but if you do a line, you need to be able to do that again over that same spot. You need to see a line on the paper and be able to draw on the thing, the imaginary thing that you see. Imagine a circle right here on my face right now. See a circle. Now your hand should be able to go there on that circle. That is the game. So that's what we're aiming for. That is the skill level that we're aiming for. I'll also give you more resources, don't worry. Another thing that you can start doing is this. After you do a page full of like straights, lines, curve lines, this line, that line, jagged lines, all these things, trying to master your motor controls, you can start copying images. Don't give mind to the shapes. Just copy them just by looking at the contours. What does that mean? Contour is like the outline of a particular thing. You just look at the outline and just copy it. It's literally copy it. And it doesn't have to be perfect. See, look at the pouch right here. Like proportions are completely off. The shapes are completely off. Doesn't matter. Just look at all the lines and copy it and just do it well. You're just getting more repetitions in your arm, right? So that is a thing. The next thing is this. When it comes to lines and shapes, you got to learn to see things and break things down into simple shapes. You see 11, you break it down into shapes. You see a pot, you break it down into shapes. You see a bird, you break it down into shape. You see this, you break that down into simple shapes. You get it, you green goblin. Good, right? So most people tell me, especially very lot of beginner artists, Cash, I see this drawing man, but it looks so complex. It's just my brain cannot be, it's not, can't put it on paper. Well, my friend, that is simply because you have not practiced by breaking down images or photographs or people into simple shapes. Aim for like three to five shapes per breakdown. It's simple. Like use a rule of threes, which simply says, look at an image, break it down into three shapes. Look at the spot. See, it's got three shapes. The, the hat, this body, and then the, the thing, and then the handle, right? So, yeah, right? Now, if you want like a free seven day course that will help you do all of these things and put this into like a step-by-step -step action plan, check out this thing called Begin Drawing. It's a seven day fundamentals course, free down below in the description. Go do that. That's your first action step. And if you do that, you have gained your first gold coin. ka -ching! right? Like the sound. That's the thing. This is the first skill in our foundational skill. We need to get this right. Go check out Begin Drawing. That will help you do just that, right? So second thing, what is the second core skill that we need to focus on? The second core skill is forms. See, this is a shape right here on the left. It's 2D. This right here, it's a form. It's 3D. What is the difference, right? One is two-dimensional and one is three-dimensional. One has depth. And that is a keyword right here, depth. Forms give you a sense of depth in your drawings. It makes your drawing go from looking flat, right? To looking like it has a lot of depth to it. And back to Carl, give you a real life example. Carl was able to make tremendous improvements with his art when he simply understood the importance of forms in his drawings, which helps him draw people with good poses. Start out here and right down. That, that by the way, was a practice session in his, in his defense. But anyways, he puts more effort into this as well. So, but to give you an idea, you can see that his level of understanding sort of evolves simply by understanding this basic principle, which is a form. I always draw all my characters and drawings with forms. I build it with forms. I think of forms as goobly, goobly clay. Look at this thing in the middle. So goobly, right? It's like goobly goo. Right? It's like, I just love saying that word, right? It's like clay. You just squish it, mush it, crash it, mash it. You put all that together. And on top of that, you add details. See, details are all fluff. It's icing on top of cake. The cake is the form. You gotta focus on the form. All right? So, how do you do it? What is this tangible action step, Kesh? Well, do this. Draw 100 boxes. Yeah. Well, well, Kesha, my man, 
Why box, bro? I want to draw characters. I want to make comics. I want to be the next Miyazaki of Mars. Like, why Mars, man? I don't know. Earth's taken, bro. I want to be Miyazaki of Mars. Fine. Draw some boxes. Why is it? Well, box is the king of forms. A box is a king of forms. Why is that? Because from a box, you can get other forms. Like, see, you can get a cylinder from the box. You can get a pyramid from the box. You can get a spear from the box. You can get other forms from the box. And you can use those other forms, googly goo forms, put them together, mash them, and draw other characters. Construct, basically, other characters with these forms. Where does it all start? With drawing boxes, right? with just this. It starts with a box. Now, I'm going to sort of link a folder image with 100 different kinds of boxes. This is, this is one of the things that I have, you know, some of my mentorship students do. Draw boxes, lots of boxes at the start. It helps your brain to see things in 3D. You can like look at something and go, oh wait, that is not just a flat piece of shape. It's not a circle. It's not a cylinder. It's a, it's a cylinder mixed with a spear. It's a cylinder mixed with a box. It's a box with mixed with a spear. You'll never know. You'll find different combinations. It's like clay, and you cut different forms out of it. So draw boxes. See? And you draw it like this. You look at the thing, and you draw it. Right? Just get all the angles and axes right and try to sort of put your box, superimpose it on the existing thing, and check for corrections. This is how you do it. Now, it's a boring exercise, but it's a very good exercise that will give you a lot of returns. If you do just these two things, you can draw a lot of things well for a beginner artist. So just do these two skills. The first two gold coins, folks, you want gold? Go get them. It's right in front of you. These are the things, and nothing's stopping you. No money is stopping you. No someone is stopping you. All the information is being given to you. You just need to take action. That's it. And anything else that stands between you and that is just a bunch of excuses. <laughs> All right. Now, let's go on to another thing. Do that. Become the form master. You've gained your second gold coin. But wait. There's more. There are three more skills in the foundational level that will help you, if you learn it, to draw everything. Everything, Cash. Yeah, man. Everything. Are you sure? Yeah, everything. How about a cat? Yeah. Dog? Yeah. Monkey? Yes, probably. Dinosaur? Sure, yeah, why not? How about a dinosaur eating a banana while a monkey is pooping on the side? Hey, man, whatever, whatever works for you, I'm telling you. You can, <laughs> right? So there are three more skills. What are they? Well, next one, it's just this. Flow. You got to flow, bro. Like I'm flowing through this workshop. The next one is this thing. The most important fundamental skill that you want to learn, which is blow. No, flow. Sorry. <laughs> Here's the thing. A lot of you draw stuff. I know, right? But a lot of your drawings look stiff. I know that as well. It's fine. But you want to have them breathe a sense of life into your art, right? And in order to do that, you have to incorporate the principles of flow into your art because it is the thing it breathes life into your art. Now, it's a very esoteric thing, right? Yeah, flow. What is flow? Well, in simple terms, flow is simply drawing the lines, shapes, and forms of your drawing in a way that is balanced and smooth and flowy, right? So it's a very complicated concept to explain in a simple workshop like this. But what I want to do is rather show you something, show you an actual exercise, and then through that, you learn its things. So here's the tangible action step when you, what you can do. I just, I just started right there. Well, it happens when you do some workshops, man. What is the tangible? I stuttered, man. I feel so bad right now. Yeah, fine. I'm good. <laughs> what is the tangible action step in order to learn flow? How do you learn the skill? In my opinion, after doing a lot of testing, the best ROI exercise that you can do, the ROI means return on investment of your time. The best return on investment of your time exercise that you can do is this. Draw quick, loose, dirty gesture sketches from life and photos. Aim for 100 sketches, three to five minute loose gestures, right? Time yourself, three to five minutes, 100. You don't have to do it all in one day, man. 
I mean, unless you're crazy, fine, feel free, go ahead and do it. But the thing is, you can do this in different sessions, like 10 per day, 10 per day, three minutes per thing. It's like 30 minutes per day, which is good. The only thing that you need to focus on are these things. While you're doing it, you have to do some things. You just don't do mindless drawings. That is called just bamboozling around like a little monkey from the Amazon forest. You want to be a deliberate learner. You want to be a creative person who is deliberate with their practice. How do you do that? You ask questions. You get it? Yeah. What are those three questions? So when you're drawing something with flow, you want to make it more flowy, right? How do you do that? You can draw. When you draw something, you ask yourself, can I draw each drawing with more spirited lines? That means it's fast, but not too fast, but slow enough to be clarity, you know, clear and clarified. It's clean, right? The next question that I often use is, can I use the least number of lines to represent a drawing? Because minimalism at its best, a more less number of lines a drawing has, more key less number of drawing, you know, lines that, that a drawing has, it just looks way better, right? So minimalism at its best, simplicity, aiming for simplicity so that you don't waste unnecessary lines and your drawings are precise and clear and just strikes like it's a sword pierces through the heart of an enemy warrior. Flow. <laughs> All right. The third question that I ask is this. Can I arrange different parts of a drawing to create more flow? Meaning a drawing has different parts like head, body, shapes, and different things. Can you arrange each thing in a different way to get more flow? Here's an example. Mikata, a student of drawing camp, has great rendering skills, but her base was lacking you know, when she started with drawing camp, what we simply did was fixed and install the principles of flow into our work and her art evolved, right? She was able to draw more flowy bases, flowy drawings, and then add rendering on top of that that makes her just work, you know, just look good. I want to give you guys like a super simple, what do you say, uh, demonstration, which is this. This is a drawing I probably have drawn a couple of years ago. So if I simply were to ask myself, Right? Hi, I want to draw the same thing with flow. Right? So first thing that I do is, can I draw each line with more spirited movement? It's not too fast. It's not too slow. Oops, it's control. Right? See? And also, I'm also going and checking out each and every single line of the particular thing. Now, the second thing is this. Can I do it with the least number of lines? That's the thing. Now, if I have to do it with least number of lines, see? This is, see, I'm just using, I'm, I'm just trying to use a very less number of lines. And the third answer, third thing is, can I arrange each of this in good shapes? Look at the arrangement of this. The previous one was completely different, right? If you look at the shape arrangement of the previous one, the head was right here. The body is right here, directly right underneath it. And the leg is right here. And see, this is what we call a stiff drawing, but... Look at the arrangement, the new arrangement that we have today, right? Same thing. The head is right here. The body, look at that, arranging the different shapes of the drawing. And then you've got the legs. See how different it is. So this is one of the aspects of flow, right? A lot of people often talk about the line of action, which is... You know, you just organize things with a line of action. That is great, but there are so many other things to it, right? Like, for example, I want to show you another one. Don't want to get carried away with too many examples. Cash, don't, don't let me not try to do that, but fine. I'll just do it. It's a workshop, fine, right? You need to also get these, see, individual lines, all these individual lines with more spirit and then compare and contrast them. with different things. Now, I'll make a separate full-blown workshop on YouTube covering flow.
No worries about that. But for today, this is what you need to do. Action step, draw quick, loose, dirty sketches from like people, from like images, from objects. Like, I don't know, take a pot and draw like a quick version of that pot. Like, like, like this, no, it is like, let, let, let me draw it right here. It's like, boom, pot. Boom, like that. Even pot is sort of posing along with that character. How cool is that, right? That is, need to, that's what, that is what you need to do. Quick, loose, dirty sketches. So with that, my friend, you have gained another gold coin. Oh, my, 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 my man, you're getting rich. Buy me a Ferrari. <laughs> All right. So do this thing. Flow is very good for you. And also it's extremely fun. Loose, dirty sketches. Who doesn't like that? Right? So, yeah. Let's, let's go with the next one, which is the fourth one, which is this. Measuring and angles. Now you've drawn things with flow. Here's the next thing that you need to do, which is proportions. This is what people call in the art world, right? They say proportions. One of the things that I often see with people who are trying to draw more freely with more flow, which is this, the problem comes is this, their proportions go way off. They just draw something so, so massively overrated. Learning, learning, no. Oh, I went too ahead. Learning how to keep this proportion in line is one of the biggest skills you can learn in drawing. So how do you do that? How do you measure things? Well, you do that with a very simple principle. It's like at the core of measuring and doing things, right? Because you want your head and your body to be proportioned the way you want them to be proportionate, not the way your hand, whatever, just goes like that. You don't want to do that, right? So I want you to start using this idea called the point of reference. What does that mean? I want, to, I want to sort of help you do this thing. So take this nose, for example. Is this nose big or small? You might say, well, I don't know. Well, if I say draw an eyes, right? And a head like this, what would you say? Is this nose big or small? You would say, yeah, man, it's 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 decent. It's sort of big. Well, how about now? Is this nose big or small? Oh man, that is that is quite a big nose for the face. Well, how about is this nose big or small? That's a small nose. What's what's how is this guy even breathing? Right now. How are you able to sort of come up with all these answers? Simply by comparing your point of reference, which is your nose, with other things on the thing. You're able to say this is small or big with a point of reference. Just like that, you need some sort of point of reference in all your drawings. Example, one of the, the character, you know, one of the things that often character designers use is use the head as a point of reference for the entire body. They use the size of the head and sort of use that as a measuring scale. Oh, the shoulder width is two heads, great. Oh, the height of the character is 3.5 heads, great. Oh, the uh, length of the arm is probably like 2.5 heads or 1.5 head. They use heads as a point of reference. Now, when you're drawing heads very specifically, right? Here's what you can do. So one of the things that we did with one of our students, Deepali, was in her foundations face, we had her draw the same face of a lady over and over and over again till she got the exact measurements and angles of lines right. She literally drew this drawing 10 times. As you can see, to the right, all her multiple attempts. Then it all came down to this, like, hey, here's what you need to do. You need to understand that you got to get this right. I'm going to use this particular shape as a point of reference like this. This is the shape right here. And then if I look at, say, the other aspects, oh, the hat is two of these face heads high. Great. Awesome. So we'll sort of record that. Oh, wait, the side thing right here, right here is probably one third of this. Oh, great. Let's sort of, you know, mark it like right here. So we'll mark things like this, you know, like this. We just mark stuff, right? And then you look at the neck. Oh, it's like the neck is sort of, you know, two thirds in width. See, two thirds in width. 
There you go. So you just compare and contrast different things. So this is what you sort of you do to measure the different face, uh, different shapes in a particular drawing. But also, you also need to get the angles right. Have you seen those old artists when they're drawing stuff? They're like, they just, you know, they just measure things. They just look at the pencil and say, ah, ah. Uh, what is it exactly that they're doing? Very simple. If you have this hand right here, right, what they do is they get that pencil across and say, oh, wait, the angle of this hand is like this. See? Instead of like this, the angle of the hand is like this. And then they take it onto their paper and like, okay, this is the angle of the hand. See? Right here. This is the angle. So just like that, we looked at different angles. See, a drawing is comprised of very many angles, right? And you take all these different angles. See, the neck is constructed with like three or four angles. This trapezius part right here on the bottom left, right? My, my face is sort of, see, right here, see? That, that part right here has three angles in it, right? And every drawing has so many angles. It's like all these, right? Look at that. And once you get these angles, you're getting the shape. And once you get the shape is when you go ahead and add in all the details, right? So you need to get this part right. So you need to get two things right. The size of shapes and the measurement and angle of shapes. Size of shapes basically gets this thing right. So we copied all of that till she got it right. And most of you just need to do it once right? Just need to do it once. So here's the actionable step for this one. Do one drawing, one drawing, and get it exactly right. Exactly as it is. That will teach you how to measure, how to draw the different angles that are there in a particular drawing or a reference image. And that skill will help you to draw more proportionate cartoons and characters later on. That's the thing right here. If you want to draw cartoons and characters in a stylized way, you don't start there. You start with the real world. You start from basic references. You start to learn from there and then go to that part. So that's how you do it. So right now you probably have four gold coins. Oh, wait, there's one more in this face. Wait, yeah, are you saying there's one more? Yeah, there are five gold coins. But you said four cash. I said only there are four gold coins. No, no, there's one more. I like to call this the bonus gold coin that nobody wanted. It's like that bonus family member that nobody wants, but they're still there. <laughs> stop with the jokes, cash. Stop, stop it. <laughs> right? So it's the bonus thing, which is this basic light and shadow. This is the fifth one. This is the fifth coin. Out of the foundational skills. See, out of the 10 core skills. Look at how many skills are allocated for the foundations. Five. Deeper. Want to go taller? Dig deep. Big trees have what? Deep roots, bro. There you go. So that's the thing. What brings depth to the drawing? Well, one is this. Simply forms. Forms, if you draw something in a three-dimensional way, their forms intact it brings depth to your drawing. But also there's another one, which is shadows, right? Light and shadows brings more depth to your drawings. So light and shadow can be a complex subject. But the thing is, all you need to know is a very simple framework when it comes to learning to draw characters which have simple light and shadow aspects to it. Here's how you do it. This is all you need to know. Right here, see on the left, you have a basic line work. On the right, you have a light and shadow. The simple thing that you need to know is when light hits a character, it does two things. One area gets illuminated, one area goes under shadows, right? And in that case, most of the case, when you simplify it down, you can simplify it down to just two values, which is the lighter value and then the darker value. Right here, for example, right? If I had to sort of mark it down for you guys, let me show you. These, ah, let me let me do it way better. These are all the lighter values, right? These are all the areas which has the lighter value. And these are the areas that have darker values or the second value, 
right? You just need to know those two things where light hits. Now it's a start. This is not everything. That is not what I'm trying to say here. Because if you start over here, this is which is the beginner part, you can then evolve your understanding. This is not the destination, this is the road that I'm showing you. You need to walk this path. And if you walk this path, you will reach the destination. But you don't start at the destination. You start at the starting point. And this is a starting point. It's a very great starting point, very specifically for artists who want to draw stylish cartoons and characters. Now, I want, to, I want to give you a very simple look into this thing. The actionable exercise is this. Great, Keshe, you gave me all this information. I'm, I'm, I'm flabbergasted right now. What is the one thing that I need to do in order to put this into effect? Just do this. When you're drawing something next time, especially use a reference, that is one, and then simply divide the values of that particular character into two things. Light, dark. Light, shadows. Take this drawing, for example. Let me sort of give you a very simple demonstration. You know what that means? It's called demonstration. So if I, right, I'm just going to do this thing right here. I'm just going to mark, ah, beautiful. I'm just going to mark the shadow areas of this particular character. I'm just going to use one value right here. So right now I have this value. Let me let me use a darker value so that it's nicer. I'm going to use this value. The second value that I have is simply white. These are the two values that are there in my drawing. Obviously, line work is the third value, but we're not going there, right? So if I just simply just look at this, right? I'm just going to simply use this value, I'm not shading, I'm just blocking where the shadows are. So, okay, it's on the top of the eye. Oh, can you, do you notice that little thing underneath the eyelids? Great. And how about this, this major area? Oh, boom. What about the ears? Okay, oh, the tip of the ears has a little bit of light to it. Oh, great, we leave that. Then. Oh, all the, the sides of the hair? You're saying that is also under shadow? Yeah, probably. Great. Oh, underneath the nose. Okay, fine. I'll do that. Oh, maybe on top of the lips. Okay. Oh, underneath the bottom of the lip. Great. All right. I'm learning. Underneath the chin. All right. Perfect. Oops, made a mistake. That's, that's what you do, guys. See, when you make a mistake, when you're drawing, what you need to do is like get on top of your chair or, or on your table and curl up and cry. That's the way you become a successful artist. When you face failure, you curl up and cry. Great way to sort of succeed in life. So, yeah. Now, next one. See, underneath the neck. See this? I'm just marking down the thing. How a simple thing. Oh, what is happening here, Kesh? Are you saying simply just marking down a one layer of shadow is giving depth to my drawings? This is insane, bro. I can't believe it. How is this possible? Yes. So if you're drawing stylized cartoons and characters, just doing this very simple exercise will sort of help you to sort of start seeing the world in a different way. You start seeing where light hits, where shadow hits, with just simply two values. This is how you start. And then later on, <clears throat> I think my throat's gone, bro. Fine, it's, it doesn't matter. So later on, what you can do is this. You can start adding another value, right? Like a darker value. Okay, this is too dark. Let me, let me choose a slightly lighter one. Yeah, see, you can choose a darker value like this and then add more depth this is too dark again. Let me let me let me let me low low it. See, you can add more depth to your drawings by simply adding another value to this thing. And then all the painters simply just do this, which is they go and add more and more and more till they get that very painterly effect that you all see.
But where does it start? It starts here. Do you start with multiple things? No, you start with single things. Start and just evolve and just add and just see, just by doing this, drawing is sort of trying to sort of take shape, right? So beautiful, isn't it? This is what happens. And beautiful part is if you just remove the line work, you can start to see the light and the shadow. That's all there is to this thing, light, shadow. There is the dark side and there's the light side. Choose, pick one. <laughs> all right, so that, my friend, is the foundation phase. So quick summary, to build a tall building, you need to dig deeper, you need deeper foundations. So if you wanna draw characters, create cartoons, create comics, tell stories with your art, dig a deeper foundation. It's gonna save you a lot of time. If you try to shortcut it, here's what will happen. You'll spend five years fooling around and wasting your time. That's exactly what I did. Don't do that. Why do you, wanna, why do you not wanna waste, save five years? Why? Don't start to draw stylized things from the start. Look at the world for as it is, draw that and then stylize it so that you know what to stylize and what not to stylize. That's the thing. So summarizing, to get through the foundations phase, you need five skills, five gold coins, five core skills. If you do this, you'll cross the foundation. So those things are lines and shapes, forms, flow, measuring and angles, and then basic light and shadow. And you have the actionable steps that you can take for each of these core skills. Go ahead and take those things. And also know this, repetitions, repetitions, repetitions. I was reading this book by Arnold recently, a book called Be Useful, one of, my, one of the best titles I've ever heard because I've always had that as my life mantra for the past couple of years, which is be useful. You don't have to be inspirational. You don't have to be motivational. You don't have to be, you don't have to be, you know, all flamboyant, extravagant, low, sad, depressed. No, you got to be useful. You got to be useful. You got to be of use to someone else or something else or to yourself, to be honest. And in that book, he said, he shared a lesson, which is repetitions, repetitions, repetitions. Repetition is the mother of skill. And one of the things Arnold apparently does is he practices all his dialogue scripts and speeches like 10 times. He would read through the whole thing 10 times and he would mark out in the front one time, two times, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times, eight times, nine times. So he would mark it down and says, if I have done it 10 times, I'm good. I'm going to ace that thing. And he says, if I do it 20 times, I'm going to ace it. I'm going to really do well on that thing. So start your journey. This is your first round. Do all of those five action steps 10 times. That is your first repetition. And other, here's the thing, folks. You are on the map, the roadmap. In order to cross the foundation level, you need to defeat the final boss, which is the boss monster, I like to call. And this monster is the monster of boredom. You have a monster at each level. So I'll sort of chat about the future monsters later on in the next workshop. The monster of boredom is this thing. Here's how it sort of comes from. Work is exciting at the start. When you're wanting to learn a skill, you're excited, you're motivated. But it's often boring and hard in the middle. When you get started, you're so optimistic. But when you get down to the middle, you just know all the faults that you see that that thing has along with all the good things that you saw. And in the middle, the initial excitement will wear off. This is where most people quit. This is where 99% of the people start and never finish things. This is exactly why 99% of people start and never finish things. Hopping from one thing to another thing to another thing to another thing. And then they'll be 45 one day, looking back at their life and telling themselves, man, I've not finished anything. And that's the worst place to be. You don't want to be there. So if you want to do anything worth of anything of worth in life, simply defeat the monster of boredom. The monster of boredom that tells you to quit in the middle. Don't do that. Just see the thing through. And maybe you learn a lesson. Maybe if you don't like it at all, you know that you will never do that thing again. But what if you like it? What if the thing that you need to do, you have to cross that path? Maybe you have to cross that path, right? The middle. So how do you do it? 
Do these three things. How do you defeat the monster of boredom? Do these three things. Show up, do the work until it gets done. That's it. Just show up, do the work until it gets done. All the action steps, uh, <laughs> all the action steps that we shared, show up, do it 10 times till it gets done. And that is your first round. You've defeated the monster of boredom. That's how you do it. So I want to leave this workshop with a simple question to you guys. Ask yourself, do you honestly need to work on the foundations? And most of you probably will. Be honest with yourself. If yes, then comment down below a simple plan on how you're going to do it. I've given you the plan. You can sort of change it and morph it to your liking if you want to. So that is the thing right here. That is the end of this workshop. In part two, we're going to cover the following other core skills, which is character design, drawing people, colors, environments, and finally, story style and imagination. Folks, that is it for this workshop, the part one of the artist roadmap. I'm going to give you guys a 100-day plan on the end of part two of the workshop. Just do these things, right? Just do these things. And here's the action step that you need to take starting right now. Start here. Go to the links down below in the description. Start a seven. The Begin Drawing program is right there. It's a seven-day thing. It's a great fundamental course. Like 45,000 people have taken it. Maybe you can join them. 45,000 people have taken it. It'll work for them. It'll work for you too. That is the end of this workshop. I really hope you learned something from this. I'll see you again in future Ultimate Drawing workshops covering different topics of art, creativity, drawing, conquering the world, fighting wars, and bloodbaths combined. <laughs> right? I'll see you guys over there. Until then, uh, yeah, bye-bye.